Welcome to the first episode of Raiderly's Teeth Remineralizing Masterclass. I'm your host, Raiderly, and I'm so glad you've joined me. Over the course of this masterclass, I'm going to be teaching you about your kidneys and your thyroid and how these organs can either build your bones or destroy them. I'm going to be teaching you the best foods for your teeth and the worst. I'm going to cover 11 essential compounds you'll need and four that you'll need to avoid. This course covers seven real life stories of people who healed their teeth, including my own story. If you're ready to take control of your dental health and become empowered with the knowledge you need to remineralize your teeth, stick around. My class includes everything you need to know as an omnivore, vegetarian, or vegan in order to heal your teeth. But I do warn you that as a vegan, you will need more discipline because your dietary protocol will not allow much in the way of comfort food. So without further ado, I'm going to launch into the daily protocol that you need for surefire fast bone regeneration. That's right, bone regeneration, because your teeth are bones. This protocol will also work for osteoporosis and many other bone conditions. Don't worry if you don't understand the protocol I'm about to give you, because this class is going to elaborate extensively. So let's get started. One milligram of vitamin K2, two grams calcium, two grams phosphorus, 30 to 90 milligrams of silica from plant sources, 600 milligrams of magnesium from food or use a magnesium citrate supplement like Natural Calm, 5,000 to 20,000 IU of vitamin D on any day that you lack significant sun exposure, 5,000 to 60,000 IU of retinol proportional with your vitamin D intake, 500 milligrams DHA and EPA, long chain fatty acids from fish, fish oil, perilla oil, or another supplement. Six to 10 grams of vitamin C from whole foods or whole food powders, not ascorbic acid. 60 to 200 milligrams coenzyme Q10, one to six drops Lugol solution iodine, one Brazil nut soaked and rinsed, 15 to 40 milligrams zinc, and here's some things to avoid. Avoid blood sugar spikes, even from natural fruits. Avoid lectins, excessive phytic acid, excessive protein, and avoid all alcohol. Hygiene adjustments. 20 minutes of oil pulling, oral irrigation or gum blotting after every time you brush or floss, rinse with sea salt after oil pulling, flossing, or brushing, herbal mouthwash, particularly if you currently have a gum infection, Otherwise, use a probiotic mouthwash, such as Inner Eco's fermented coconut kefir. Brush using toothpaste or powder that is free of glycerin, triclosan, fluoride, or sodium lauryl sulfate. And that's the protocol. You're going to be learning all about why this makes sense and how to do it over the course of this masterclass. Seasonal changes. Humans are not meant to sustain a single diet all year round, year after year. Fruits and vegetables come in and out of season. Animals produce more vitamin rich dairy and more volume in the summertime. Seeds are mostly available in the autumn. In nomadic cultures, we would not only be shifting our diets with the season, but with the locations we traveled through. Our dietary choices are meant to shift, and these shifts are meant to be driven both by environmental changes as well as internal changes. Our cravings are meant to shift as our needs shift. Our minds are designed to reinterpret foods as tasting great when we need them desperately and as tasting bland when we don't need them. I'm not gonna explain how far we are from our intuitive ancestors and why at this time. If you want a great read on how we got here, read Ishmael or watch my video, Returning Humanity to Sanity, Evolution versus Change, which discusses the concepts in Ishmael and how these same concepts show up in several other incredible books. We're going to talk about healing cavities by remineralizing your teeth. But before we get any further into that, I just want you to know that the outlined dietary protocols in this class are for healing your cavities. Once your cavities are healed, you shouldn't feel stuck following all these protocols for life. If you're struggling with cancer, obesity, flora imbalance, or digestive issues, then some of these suggestions will not be optimal for you. Here are a few examples. If you're battling cancer, 
I recommend a raw vegan diet made up primarily of vegetable juice with a tiny bit of added flax oil to assist nutrient uptake. If you're struggling with a flora imbalance, such as candida, I recommend doing my flora flesh cleanse before embarking on the outlined diet for healing your cavities. You can find the details of the flora flesh cleanse in my book, Appliance Free 5-Minute Revitalizing Recipes. If you have serious digestive issues, start by reading my article on the subject or listening to my podcast called Stopping Acid Reflux and Healing Your Digestive System. Salivary Glands Salivary glands are critical to dental health because they are responsible for bringing mineral-rich lymph fluid into your teeth. If you have any soreness beneath the gum line or near the ears, then you likely have inflammatory activity in your salivary glands, also known as your parotid glands. This area becomes clogged, inflamed, and sore when you have a virus, cold, abscessed tooth, gum infection, sore throat, thyroid dysfunction, or acute tension in the neck muscles. Buildup in this area due to one thing, such as a gum infection, can lead to other things on the same list, such as a sore throat or acute neck tension. Another sign of lymphatic buildup in the region is acne along the jawline, especially persistent acne that comes and goes over months or years. Getting large doses of retinol and vitamin D daily, combined with enough iodine, selenium, and zinc will help your salivary glands, but for most people this won't be enough to clear blockages in the area. The following protocol is especially for you if your salivary glands are regularly sore or if you get a sore throat easily and frequently. One grapefruit daily, either as wedges or eaten with a grapefruit spoon, but not as juice. External application to the area, that's your jaw, throat, and around your ears, of lemon juice, apple cider vinegar, and or castor oil daily. One drop oregano oil in your coconut oil when oil pulling, once or twice weekly. Now let's talk about retinol, also known as preformed vitamin A, because this is a very critical nutrient for both your salivary glands and for your teeth. Retinol keeps us from getting sick. It keeps our immune system from overreacting. It is necessary for growth and reproduction. We need retinol for building bones and teeth and for the actions of our hormones. Retinol regulates the action of over 500 genes in the body which makes it a major regulator of all of our cells and how they function. Starting at conception, retinol orchestrates the proper division and differentiation of every cell in the body. Retinol influences our genes through something called hormone receptors called retinoic acid receptors and retinoid X receptors. These receptors travel in the nucleus of the cell, binding and forming combinations with each other and with other compounds, like vitamin D and thyroid hormones. And thyroid hormones are essential for healthy bones. We'll be discussing the thyroid in more detail later. Some of the best sources of retinol for your teeth are cod liver oil, high vitamin butter oil from A2 casein animals that have grazed on green grass for at least 26 days, and raw dairy products from A2 casein sources that are not heated above 120 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're vegan and you do not wish to compromise your vegan path, you will be relying on your body's ability to convert beta carotene and other carotenoids into retinol. The average person converts about 1 12th of their beta carotene into retinol. Depending on your genetics and overall health, you may be converting as little as 1 25th. High sources include leafy greens, carrot juice, sweet potatoes, goji berries, and colorful bell peppers. For a full chart about vegan sources of beta carotene, check out my book, The Ultimate Nutrition Reference. If you're vegan and you're working on healing your cavities and or salivary glands, you should consume at least two items on the following list each day with one to two tablespoons of cold pressed flax oil or ice pressed olive oil to flood your body with carotenoids. High quality fat is essential for the uptake of beta carotene and its conversion to retinol. Add this oil directly to your salad or juice. If you have digestive problems, I recommend leaving out the sweet potatoes and goji berries. Instead, go for the juice and salad. You can also add other orange and red fruits and vegetables to your diet, as all of them will have some carotenoids. Just go easy on the nightshades, which includes tomatoes, peppers, goji berries, potatoes, and eggplants, as these foods contain lectins that commonly contribute to causing leaky gut. 
One quart carrot juice, which equals 180,000 IU of beta carotene, which equals 15,000 IU for good converters, or around 7,000 IU for poor converters. One half cup dried goji berries or goji berry juice, which is about 12,000 IU of beta carotene, which equals 1,000 IU for good converters or 400 IU for poor converters. Two cups mashed bright orange sweet potatoes, which is 100,000 IU of beta carotene, but that only works out to about 8,500 IU for good converters or 4,000 IU for poor converters. And, or, a large salad containing at least two cups of shredded kale or dandelions and four cups of lettuce or spinach, which is about 20,000 IU of beta carotene, which works out to about 1,600 IU for good converters or 800 IU for poor converters. And again, remember you should consume at least two items on this list each day if you're a vegan. You cannot overdose on carotenoids unless you have some rare condition I've never heard of. It doesn't matter if you plug in all the carrot juice you've been drinking into your nutrition software and it says you've had 150,000 IU of vitamin A, because you actually haven't. You've only consumed carotenoids, which your body will convert as it needs, if your body's ability to convert is not compromised. If you're consuming animal products, it is important to balance vitamin A intake with the intake of vitamin D, C, E, iodine, and selenium. If you do not have enough of these other vitamins, or if you're not sure that you have enough, then stay under 10,000 IU of retinol on average and generally stay under 50,000 IU in a single day. Aim for a minimum of 3,000 IU of retinol per day. While working to start balancing my own diet for optimal teeth regeneration, I developed some joint pain, which is a common symptom of retinol overdose, or more accurately, retinol imbalance. I had consumed around 12,000 IU in a single day. Overdose symptoms are usually a sign that you're not getting enough vitamin D. To illustrate how much overconsumption is not an issue when consuming these nutrients in balance, let me quote a man who wrote, At 80,000 IU of vitamin A per day, my gum condition cleared and has stayed clear. I haven't been to a dentist in 21 years or flossed my teeth in 15. I recommend getting at least 1,000 IU of vitamin D for every 4,000 IU of vitamin A. So if you're getting 20,000 IU of vitamin A per day, aim for 5,000 IU or more vitamin D each day. Vitamin D. Sherry writes, after suffering from low energy, musculoskeletal pain, poor balance, and depression, among other things, for a number of years, I began to feel better after taking large amounts of vitamin D. And I do mean significantly better, like the difference between night and day. Moreover, it only took a few weeks of supplementation at 8,000 IU per day of D3. Before delving into vitamin D, I'd like to talk briefly about the word vitamin. The term vitamin originated in 1912. It was derived from Latin terms for life and amino acids. At the time, it was thought that all vitamins would contain amino acids, but as more were discovered, this was not the case. Today, vitamin roughly translates into vital substance. Different vitamins have very different properties. Vitamin C is water-soluble, whereas vitamin D is fat-soluble. Water-soluble vitamins can be absorbed even in the absence of fat, whereas fat-soluble vitamins require the presence of fat to be absorbed. Cobalt is the essential aspect of vitamin B12, yet cobalt itself is a mineral. The essential core of vitamin C is an enzyme. Many vitamins, including vitamins A and C, are also antioxidants. I apologize if this is confusing, I'm simply illustrating the vagueness of the term vitamin. Vitamin D is actually a pro-hormone, a substance that your body converts into a hormone. Your body makes vitamin D in a chemical reaction that occurs when sunlight hits your skin. This reaction produces cholecalciferol, and the liver converts it to calcidiol. The kidneys then convert the substance to calcitriol, which is the active form of the vitamin D hormone in your body. Vitamin D is found in cholesterol and is similar to your adrenal and sex hormones. Vitamin D circulates in your blood and binds to receptors in order to evoke a variety of biologic actions. Most relevantly, vitamin D causes calcium to be absorbed from your gut into your bloodstream. 
When vitamin D is not present, calcium is also not abundant in your bloodstream, and the hormones that stimulate bone production are not released. It is critical that you get enough vitamin D for the health of your bones. If you get hours of sunlight every day, then you will probably not need any vitamin D from your diet. Some doctors, such as Dr. Joseph Mercola, claim that just 15 minutes of sun exposure each day is enough, but many people have found that that is not enough for them. If you eat an omnivorous diet, that does not mean you are automatically getting enough vitamin D. It is critical that the animal foods you are eating come from healthy animals raised on an open pasture. Unfortunately, free-range eggs only means cage-free, but the absence of cages usually means thousands of chickens crowded together in a barn, raised on a diet of GMO corn, GMO alfalfa, GMO soy, and or glyphosate-sprayed wheat. Eggs from these miserable chickens will not help your teeth or your overall health. There has been an ongoing debate on exactly how much vitamin D is ideal for humans. Research has shown that people have very different uptake levels, and very few studies have done much to test out vitamin D and retinol in concert together. However, it is known that vitamin A toxicity happens almost exclusively in the absence of other critical cofactors, particularly vitamin D. Another critical factor is vitamin K2. In general, if you're going to start megadoses of anything, then you must increase your uptake of everything else at the same time. This is why whole food supplements are safer than synthetic supplements. Whole foods already come with a balance of vitamins, minerals, hormones, enzymes, probiotics, and trace minerals. Studies and individual testimonials have shown time and time again that vitamin D and vitamin A must be balanced, but an ideal ratio has yet to be identified. At a minimum, you need at least 100 IU of vitamin D for every 2,000 IU of vitamin A. That's 20 to 1 A to D. But because vitamin A toxicity from lack of vitamin D is common, and vitamin D toxicity from lack of other needed cofactors is rare, I suggest getting at least 1,000 IU of vitamin D for every 4,000 IU of vitamin A. That's 4 to 1 A to D. EPA and DHA for dental health. Our bodies need long chain fatty acids called EPA and DHA. These are made from converting omega fatty acids from plant foods. Most people do not get enough omega-3 in their diet and many of the people who do are unable to make this conversion efficiently. If your body can, then consuming a couple tablespoons of very fresh, cold-pressed flax oil with your vegetable juice or salad will give you some EPA and DHA. If you are not making this conversion efficiently, then you will need a source of long-chain fatty acids directly. For omnivores, you can choose wild-caught cold-water fish or a fish oil supplement. For vegans and vegetarians, you can choose a supplement that gets its EPA and DHA from algae, such as Dr. Furman's. Watch out for supplements containing carrageenan, a stabilizer and thickener, which is known to cause immune responses and digestive issues. Also watch out for sorbitol and other sweeteners. Dr. Furman's does not contain any of these, but it does unfortunately have added synthetic vitamin E, which some people have adverse reactions to as well. Long chain fatty acids aren't just vital for your bones. They're also what make up your brain cell walls and your colon. If you're seeking to heal from leaky gut or poor memory, DHA and EPA are just what you're looking for. We'll be talking more about fish oil and how you can get your 500 milligrams of DHA and EPA as this masterclass goes forward. You can also find relevant links below this video. Now, let's talk about oil pulling. Oil pulling is easy. Put a spoonful of coconut oil or another oil in your mouth and swish. You can do this while you're in the shower or while you're making yourself breakfast. To get the maximum benefit, I recommend swishing your mouth with salt water afterward. The salt water rinse. Do not skip this step. I didn't do this when I first tried oil pulling and my gums swelled up around my back teeth so extremely that my teeth couldn't touch. This is because oil sucks impurities from your lymph system, sinus system, jaw, throat glands, and the skin around your mouth. All that stuff is coming through your gums. Rinsing with salt water removes the remaining oil and toxins from your gums, preventing any foul reactions. You can also boost the impact of this practice by adding some essential oils to your coconut oil. Cinnamon, 
oregano, clove, myrrh, and mint all have benefits for your oral health. Clove kills common bacteria and is so widely accepted for its effectiveness that even Western medicine uses it. Oregano kills more rare bacteria that clove doesn't kill. These additions are especially great if you have a toothache and want quick pain relief. Although, one word of caution on the cinnamon. If you're prone to canker sores, avoid cinnamon essential oil, or even all cinnamon entirely. For more information about canker sores, you can read my article, Healing and Preventing Canker Sores Holistically. This is just the first lesson. I have so much more to share with you in order to empower you and inspire you to completely remineralize your teeth. In the next lesson, we're going to get into some case studies of individuals who have healed their teeth, including a vegan story. We're also going to discuss misconceptions around ascorbic acid and the importance of the calcium to phosphorus ratio in your diet. If you know anyone who could benefit from saving thousands of dollars in unnecessary dental work, then please share this masterclass with them. Let's save people's teeth together, shall we? You can find all of the relevant links below, including my teeth remineralizing article on Raiderly.com. I'm Raiderly, and as always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you want to hear more, then subscribe.